You are lazy. There are things about you that are lazy. I don't believe that. I am having such secondhand embarrassment watching that. Did you guys see me cringing the whole time? It is Super Nanny Saturday, and this week we had quite the comments left on the channel. It said that I need to shut up and play the clip. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. If you are new here, I am Kristen. This is a commentary channel and we use Super Nanny as a jumping off point to discuss discipline techniques because we love Super Nanny and we're dealing with some kind of child in our life, whether it be a grandchild, children of our own, I am a parent, or students, I'm also an educator. And we talk about the techniques that Joe Frost uses and then we also talk about what are some alternatives that are out there because not every family is exactly the same. It's not one size fits all. So you're interested in that. Hey, welcome. Grab your beverage and let's dive in. Hannah, come on. Hey. Hannah. Josh. Hannah, get over here now. Becca, come on. No, Josh. Girls, please don't touch the cards. I've got enough to deal with your brother. Did you take anything? You promise? I have to check her pockets and stuff to make sure that she didn't get anything. We are just off to the races with this one, aren't we? Joe Frost takes the family to the local shop and she's like, just go shopping and I'm gonna observe you in your natural habitat. And we both know this isn't gonna go well and it doesn't. One kid gets lost, another kid's getting yelled at because they didn't watch the other kid. The youngest kid in the stroller, every time she's trying to go down the aisles, they're just like, whoop, I'm just gonna grab all the items as we go. And then at one point, mom is rummaging through the pockets of one of the kids because she says that the child steals items when they go out. And we, we have to come back to that. But for now, can we talk about how Joe Frost says that the mom isn't confident? Of course the mom isn't confident. You threw her to the wolves. You sent her to the store with kids that are various ages. I mean, that's hard for even an experienced caregiver. Not impossible, but difficult. Don't touch that. Stop it now. No, leave her alone. Leave her alone. The most obvious thing was how fluttered mom became when she was with her children out in public. She really started to panic. Okay, breathe. You can't breathe. <laughs> this is panic for you. Yes, because <laughs> they're like all over. I don't even know where Becca went. You have expectations that you need to set before you go. This is not a playground. You can't just touch everything. And those expectations need to be developmentally appropriate. Expecting young children to act like little soldiers and like follow along and not touch anything. That's, that's some pretty high expectations. And you have to give them a job. I mean, for them to just stand there and wait? No, one kid is in charge of holding the paper and crossing out the items that we need. And then one of the kids is finding the items. And then the last kid maybe puts the items in the shopping cart or you give it to the little kid who, if it's a safe item, they can play with. I mean, there are so many layers to making trips like this successful. And it just takes practice and a plan. Plan, a plan, and practice. Come on, Joshua. I'm going to get Joshua. <laughs> Somehow she manages to get Joshua into the kitchen, she drags him across the floor, and he ends up in that high chair strapped in. And he is screaming, screaming and screaming. He doesn't want to be there. We might need to call this episode the most confusing mom. Last week we had the most immature mom. This is the most confusing mom. Are you being serious or are you laughing? Are you giving a direction or are you playing peekaboo? Come on, your brother's sleeping. Stop. 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 Stop it. Stop, you're being dead. You're making it worse. Stop. You're not. I don't know, I feel like I saw something different with this. You tell me what you saw is I saw an older child who was stacking up blocks, super excited about it. And then the younger one was kind of like on her belly and her legs were up in the air and she was kind of kicking her legs and then boop, and it fell. I don't think it was intentional. But regardless on whether or not it was intentional or unintentional, I would still react the same way. I would not have gone to timeout. I would 
would have run over to the victim and I would have been like, oh my gosh, because she's all upset. Wow, your blocks are all on the floor. I saw you stacking them so high. You were using the blue blocks and the green blocks and the yellow blocks. And it looked like you were working hard on that. And the reason why you're doing all of these details is because first of all, you're buying yourself time because you're trying to figure out what the heck actually happened. And you're letting that kid know, I see you, I get you, this is hard, even if you think it's stupid. But really what you're trying to do is verbalize and model what it must feel like to be the other child because you have some little eyeballs that are watching. And so often we tell kids, imagine what it feels to be in their shoes or put yourself in their shoes. They can't do that easily. It's very difficult when they're constantly thinking about themselves. They, their brain hasn't developed in the same way. So when we model and verbalize oh, you were stacking those up and use this color and that color. The other little eyeballs are looking and the other little ears are listening. And with that alone, the other child might go, I'm so sorry, sissy, I'll help you clean it up or I'll stack with you. And then that's it, you fixed it. But if not, let's say you do this whole thing and the other child stays quiet. You're then going to turn to that other child and go, wow, Sissy's blocks got no knocked over, didn't they? She's so sad, isn't What could we do to make this better? And play dumb. If the child still can't come up with, oh, let's help her fix it, then you go, maybe we could help her fix it. Oh yeah, and then you start building together because these are young children. Education over punishment. They need to learn how to resolve conflict. And then while you're stacking those blocks together, you talk about it, you go, huh, oh, sometimes blocks get knocked over accidentally because our legs hit them. And if we don't want that to happen in the future, maybe we should sit at a table or we should sit a little bit further away or be careful about our body, but accidents happen sometimes and then we fix it and we make it better. And other times it's not an accident. Sometimes people knock over blocks on purpose because they're angry, because the other person won't share or whatever. Has that ever happened? And you're just like talking about it. What's gonna help you the most as a caregiver is teaching. How did we get here? Why did these blocks get knocked over? And if you could get to the root of that issue, then you can have two children who work in harmony and you don't have to put anybody on time out. You made a decision to have four kids. You have not shown me any responsibility or accountability for what has happened in this house. You are an immature woman. You are lazy. There are things about you that are lazy. I don't believe that. Get over it. Get That's over it. That's not laziness. Deb, get over it. I am having such secondhand embarrassment watching that. Did you guys see me cringing the whole time? I was cringing for the mother and I was cringing for Joe Frost. I'm gonna be honest. That's all I can do on this channel. I think that it is completely unnecessary and mean to call people names. I don't call children names and I don't call adults names. It is unnecessary and it's just mean. You can give the same sentiment of, hey, you called me to come here. You were the one saying you had trouble in your home and I'm here now. Do you still want my help without ripping the woman to shreds on national television by calling her names? That was just mean. What do you guys think? And don't come at me because I know I could already I could already feel the, the I could hear the typing the super Joe Frost fans I'm a Joe Frost fan too and I could probably criticize myself from what I did yesterday and I'm not saying that I'm any better than her I'm just calling out what I see that I'm just not a fan of so let me know what you think about it I don't think you should call people names even adults yes she loved it. She had so much fun with it. This was a great technique to teach Hannah not to steal. You have a nice day, ma'am. So long. You're a good little shopper. So you paid all of this with money? Yeah. Hannah got it. She, she understood that mommy can't give you that until I physically pay for it with money. When we're in the supermarket or in the shops 
and we pick things up, we have to pay for them. I'm so glad we're back to something happy because that was really heavy earlier. And if I'm getting darker and darker, it's because a storm is rolling through. So I'm not sure if we're even gonna make it to the end of the video or I'm just gonna disappear <laughs> into the darkness. I can't put on lights because the glasses, I haven't figured it out anyway. I love role playing. Instead of just telling our kids what to do or telling them what not to do, actually practice doing it. Thanks, Jojo. Why do we love the ridiculous wave? Let there be light. I had to turn on a light. So sorry if there's a reflection of my glasses. Let's see the update on this family. Debbie, the mom is at 47, dad is 48, Rebecca is 25 now, Sarah is 23, Hannah is 21, and Josh is 18. So all of the kiddos are adults. Let's see if they give us any other information. They did family road trips. I guess mom was had a blog. We don't have to click on everything. You guys can check out the wiki on your own, but let's see. Let's look at their Instagrams. Let's see if there's any pictures. I like to see pictures of them. This is the, the first daughter, Rebecca. Yay, hers is in private. It's public so we can see pictures. We have a lot of fitness pictures. Go, Rebecca, do your thing. She's got some kinds of awards. Exercise is not just good for your body. It's good for your mental health. She, she's got a hype friend here. We like that friend. She's like, go, do it. That's really cool. Good, good for her. You're stronger than you think. Absolutely. Love that. And Sarah. Let's see if we have anything from Sarah. Eh, oh, private. Private. We do have this picture. I'll move it over so you guys can see it real quick. But we just have the profile picture. So that's Sarah. And let's see if we have... Hannah, Hannah's says private as well. And that is Hannah. We don't have anything from Josh or mom or dad. So that's it for this family. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.